Well, are you ready for the next installment? The Beginner's Guide to Home Distilling? Made way back in top of them hills where there's plenty of moonshine still. Yep. We're here. All the rudimentary introductions are out of the way. Title page and all of that stuff. Yes. We're going to talk about stills. Now, this is the beginner's guide, but it's also helpful to many, many people out there. Um, and what we're going to talk about, here's what we're going to do. We're going to break down stills of different materials, different styles, different types. And there are only two basic types. We're going to describe what they can do, what they will not do, um, and also some variations. Oh, that's the easy part, so please buckle up, sit back, enjoy, because we've got a lot of information to cover. Remember, subscribe. Yeah, share us with your friends, comment below. You know the routine. That's all we get, and we appreciate it. Now, on to what we're here for. There are two real basic types of stills, okay? Um, there's a such thing as called as a fractionating column. But now you're talking about something a little bit different in the industry uh, where you're drawing off um, the different substances at different levels, um, and it's more in the petroleum industry. They can use a fractionating column where there are certain fractions that you can pull off at different levels. Now, you already know there's a lot of science behind this. Oh, but the science that we need to understand is what is right here. Uh, we're not concerned with fractionating in a column, all right? So the two types are pot and reflux. And they both serve very, very useful purposes. Uh, now, the still designs that are on the market today are all relatively good. Um, there's probably not I've seen one recently. I saw one that was a Turbo 500 bottom that was kind of bastardized with uh, a bunch of this other stuff, uh, and they were selling it for like almost a thousand bucks. That really not a good combination. Probably not a good product. And oh, by the way, I'd stay away from that. But having said that, the large majority of the still producers and manufacturers have good products. When it's into your hands now, it's your challenge, and I know you've accepted it, just to run it correctly. And you'll be extremely happy with your results. So, what does a pot uh, still do? Well, a pot still allows you to do one thing and one thing only, very simple. It allows you to separate ethanol from water uh, in a in, 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 a in an environment that you control. Uh, and that's what it does. Uh, it's just nothing more than a means for you to get to the end, which is to separate your wash, mash, whatever you have that you fermented, you want to separate that alcohol by volume from the water. Uh, and it does that, it will uh, a pot still allows you to do that in a very, very efficient manner. What it does also is it allows you to retain the majority of the flavors and or the profiles of whatever was in the kettle. Hmm. Okay, bottom line. Pot stills are really, really good for whiskeys, bourbons, um, oh my goodness, rums. Um, you know, things that you already know you can anticipate has a very good flavor profile. Now, the other type of still is a reflux. And we've all heard this term, and, but sometimes we get it confused with other things. A reflux still is nothing more than a pot still that's been primarily enhanced a little bit. Now, what that will do, and we're going to draw one and describe it to you, then we're going to show you. What that does is that it allows you to go one step further in the separation of ethanol from water molecules. Okay, It allows you to do an initial separation, then another separation, then another separation, and then another separation based on your efficiency 
So what you wind up with is a much purer ethanol content, a higher proof, and oh, by the way, absolutely no flavor. You're, you're going to drag out everything, and what you're going to have left is not pure ethanol, but you're going to have ethanol in its purest form that you can produce uh, in your own home. Okay? So, oh, what kind of... Vodka, gin, because we can also flavor it at the same time. We'll talk about that. Gins, um, things like that. Um, oh, Everclear, bam. So it, you understand that there's really only two basic types. Now, there's one other still that I'm not even going to show you, but we already, we're aware of it, is the, you know, the still with the thumper. Um, and I've beat this to death. I'm not going to describe or talk about thumpers. Uh, it just George's opinion. Um, if you are successful with a thumper, have at it. The mystique around a thumper is so misunderstood and so misused that uh, people feel as though they need one in order to be, air's air quotes, yeah, traditional. Um, I'm here to tell you it's not necessarily the case. All right, uh, let's move right into this. <clears throat> so I want to show you a couple, and then we're going to do a, like a pictorial here real quick. Um, it, we're going to describe some specific features about stills in general. Um, and then you make your own choice. So please, don't call me and ask me or write me and ask me which one of these I think you should have. Uh, either one of these would be fine. Um, it all has to do with your budget, uh, your comfort level, and uh, what you're doing. Um, let's start with the smallest one I have. Here's a one gallon. This is copper. You can see it's already tarnished. It's been sitting out. I've had this for years. Um, it's now a uh, an ornament. Um, just understand it's one gallon capacity and we already know that alcohol by volume means okay so we've got one gallon and there's oh what 10% alcohol by volume. What do you got? Yeah, maybe a pint that you're going to get out of this. This is really good for the guy who's, you know, he's out in the middle of the village, you know, he's just going to, he just happens to have a gallon of fermented mash, and he just happens to have one of these, and uh, he just wants to make enough to get himself and his buddies happy. Uh, that'll work for you. Um, this is a straightforward design. Um, it's just the kettle, the cap, a column, of course, with the bung on the top, and that's where the thermometer goes. And here's the condenser. This is nothing more than a tube wrapped around a tube. Cold water in, cold water out, and here your spirits drip out right here. Caution. Um, it, you can, yeah, can you use this on a, on a regular stove? Oh yeah, you can use it on a gas stove, you can use it on an electric stove. Um, and I've had somebody do this. Please don't put this on the stove before you fill it. Um, remember, the bottom of it's been soldered. So and it doesn't take a whole lot of heat to melt solder. So what do you think happens? Yeah, you pick it up and the bottom stays there. And now you've got an open. Okay, you, you follow me? Uh, really neat, but now, look at this as well. Uh, it's tarnished. Can you imagine what the inside of that's going to look like? And you can barely see inside there. That's, you sh it should be shiny, but it's not. So cleaning this uh, becomes a challenge, and keeping it clean becomes a challenge because it does develop a lot of toxic uh, coatings. All right, let's put this aside. That brings me to my next, this is a three gallon still. So in this particular case, now you're going to notice there are some similarities between how each one of these are designed. And they're, they're actually all the same I like to say, hey, it's exactly the same, only different. Yeah, uh, it's only different in where things are, but the design and purpose all remain the same. Uh, this is the kettle. This is what you could call the long arm if you wanted to, but this is where the ethanol vapors and water vapors come out. Um, this we could fashion into a gin basket if we like. Uh, it's a little bit high and there's a, a short space in between here, but it does work excellent as a, like a slobber box. 
and you can drop out if you potentially go a little bit too hot and, and puke. Uh, and this is the condenser. Cold water in, cold water out, and all this is is a coil, stainless steel, and your spirits drop out of here. Simple as that. Uh, we're going to do our next video is going to be on heating because there's many many options and we need to fully understand heating before we go into that. And this particular still works extremely well. Oh, it's it has a magnetic bottom, so it works on an induction cooker. You can use it on a on the stove. It's small enough to actually operate in your own little kitchen. So uh, a very good, well-built, well-designed still, but the thermometer is in the kettle. Now, uh, you know that I always advocate that your thermometer goes to the, goes in the point of what we call the point of no return, where your vapors leave your column. You know, and I'll show you that on the next one. But in this particular case, <laughs> you see our vapor leaves here and it's only got this short distance, so this thermometer kind of works pretty, pretty good. Um, it's a little off, but your vapors are, it's so close, there's no issue. Now what kind of still was that? Pot still. Yeah, that's just a standard pot still. Both of those were standard pot stills. Now we're going to move into, yeah, we'll move into, this is the next three gallon. Uh, this is known as the Mighty Mini from Mile High. They make an excellent product. So does Brewhouse. So does Steven Stills. Um, all of those reputable companies are, do very well at providing you with a product that you can, all you got to do is understand how to work it. All right. Um, oh, this one is really neat because guess what? It's the same thing as that one. Um, only... Yep, different. Only different in that you have one column. So when, when you have a column that separates your vapors to exit your exit port and your condenser here, it's called a Liebig condenser. I like calling them a shotgun condenser because it's a big hole. Uh, it's just a tube wrapped with another tube, water in, water out. Remember, water always goes in the bottom. Somebody will, you're going to ask, and, and I'll say it many times, water always goes in the bottom and comes out the top. Now this particular still is called a dual purpose still. It can be run as a pot still or it can be run as a reflux still. And the option is totally up to you. And they do that by including this jacket around the column. Because what happens in a Reflux still is your vapors begin to rise. Now I'm not even have to draw. So I'm just going to do it now, so I ain't got to draw this. Your vapors, once you achieve the proper temperature, okay, and ethanol boils at what 172.3, 173.4. It depends on which book you're looking at and what your elevation is and all that stuff. Okay, as a general rule, when you have water and ethanol together. Okay, the boiling point of that mixture, which is known as an, a positive azeotropic blend, is always going to be, this, this is ethanol, this is water. Your boiling point is always going to be a little lower than your ethanol, your lowest constituent, okay? So it'll be yeah, somewhere in the 170, 171 range. As that happens, and that vapor begins to rise, if you've got a water control hooked up here, water in, remember, in the bottom, out the top, in bottom, out top. When you trickle water in here, as opposed to here, this is just full on, it's nothing more than a condenser, this is what you could consider a precondenser. It's a chamber, a precondensing chamber. But what that allows is that vapor, is that vapor begins to rise and your column stacks because it will. It takes that time to balance and it will stack with ethanol vapor that is also laden with water molecules. When it gets here and you've got that trickle of water flowing in here, the most volatile substance continues to rise and some of that other substance starts to drop out. Now as that happens it drops out and it starts to achieve a higher temperature again. And guess what? Those volatile substances start to revaporize and rise. 
Now they meet again in the chamber and the same thing happens. That separation starts to take place. It's a precondensing. And your water droplets start to fall out again and some of your other substances. As it hits that heat, those the most volatile substances, in this case being ethanol, uh, because it's going to vaporize at a lower temperature, begin to rise again. See, now what I'm describing is a, a reflux process, which is a continuous rotation inside your column. It's taking place over and over and over again. Now, it will do that until it achieves the purity that chemically it's going to achieve. Um, and then it will exit your port. That is why a reflux still will produce, on average, you know, 180 proof. Um, and that is why, oh, the heads and the four shots on a reflux still are very easy to determine and very easy to identify because of their strength. Uh, on a pot still, we use the rule of thumb. In a five gallon still, the first two ounces get tossed out. Then I start collecting. In a reflux still, it's about the same thing. It's only the first two ounces, but you can definitely tell the difference because of the height of the alcohol content um, and uh, some of those other substances that are going to come out first, methanol being one of them, okay? You with me so far? Okay. Okay, this is, mm -hmm. so this is a combination pot reflux. You can do either one. And if you want to run it as a pot still, just don't run water through the condenser, or the pre-condenser, or what we would call the reflux chamber. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, when we step up to our next one, now this one's whew, so close to like four and a half gallons, almost five gallons. Um, in, in this, now it's not really full five, about four and a half gallons. Uh, but you don't want to fill these all the way up. You always have to make sure that you've got some headroom in your still. Please, I forgot to mention that. Um, if, you, if you don't have any headroom in your still, there's no place for any separation to take place, nor is there an opportunity for you to get any kind of a, now I'm going out on a limb here, cyclonic activity, which takes place during that thermal transfer which causes some of your vapors to start to develop a cyclone, a cyclone. Um, and uh, th then they travel up your column. So you make sure that you don't fill this up all the way, all right? Always leave about oh, at least a couple of inches so you got some headroom in there. And the same thing with your three gallon Mighty Mini or any of these other stills. Now this one in particular, I'm gonna set this one on the floor because it's a little bit taller. Now, what do you notice is the difference between this one and the Mighty Mini? The only difference is the location of the condenser. This one also has a reflux chamber. So you, this is a dual purpose as well. And you can run this as a pot, which means you just don't even hook these up. And remember, if you're using a reflux chamber, you need a method to control the water flow. Too much water flow, and you have absolutely no output because all you're doing is rising, condensing, and dropping everything, to include ethanol. <laughs> it's just dropping back if you got too much water flow. If you don't have enough water flow, and it's really, really low, um, it, you're skipping any of the reflux activity. It's just running so slow that it just starts running out. It starts running like a pot still. How do you know the difference? Very, very easy, okay? If you're at the beginning of your run and you're running a reflux and it's only pumping out like 140 proof, your reflux chamber is not operating efficiently. Got it? Let me turn the water up a little bit. Get that balance. You'll feel it. Uh, now, on the other hand, if you've got it running and you've got it up to temperature, you know where it's supposed to be, and you've got nothing coming out, you've got too much water going through here. Slow the water down. Give those vapors an opportunity to transfer over. <laughs> okay. Now, in the Mighty Mini, we've got a bung in the very top, and that's where our thermometer or sensor for our PID goes. And just as, that's the point of no return, 
just as we do here, there's a small port right here on the back of this elbow for my thermometer or my PID probe because this is called the point of no return. You see the ethanol starts to move up this column and it makes that turn. For, for evermore, not to be seen back here. And then it drops through your condenser and then out of your spout. Now, what do we say about water flow? This is your condenser. It goes in the bottom and comes out the top. Okay? All right. We are making headway. Now, this is a two inch column. The Mighty Mini is a two inch column. Uh, this one's a, about three quarters of an inch. Um, and that makes a difference. It truly makes a difference. Even the still that you make at home with a pressure cooker and a five eighths or three quarters or a half inch copper tube that comes out the top, uh, that size of that tube makes a difference because it has everything to do with the efficiency and I heard a noise. The efficiency and your capability to do that separation. Yeah, you follow me? Uh, hopefully I can make this a whole lot clearer. Uh, because, now this is an eight gallon model from Brew House. Um, the only real difference between Brew House and Mile High is the shape of the kettle itself. You know, Mile High does a little bit better job polishing, but that's really the only difference because otherwise everything else is 304 stainless steel. <laughs> now this one is a three inch column. And I bring that up, ha, one other thing to grab. As an example, this is a three inch piece of column. Yes. And you are aware that this is two inch. So you can see the difference in that. Now, in a two inch column, pi r square. Jethro Bodine said, no, pi r round, cake r square. I had to throw that in there. I know, corny. Um, pi r square, pi times the radius squared. Now, I always get flabbergasted and mixed up on what that actually is. I know what it is, but sometimes I have a hard time describing what it is. It is the distance around here, okay? So, pi r square, pi times the radius squared. Pi is 3.14. So a two inch column is 3.14 inches around the inside. A three inch column is twice that. It's only one inch bigger, but it's twice that because it's pi times the radius squared. So you have twice as much area in here for vapors to travel. What that does is it allows you to run your still not any better um, and even a smaller one's not any worse uh, it's, it just has everything to do with time at that point um, all things being equal if you're running your stills at equal efficiency and you're running a two inch column and you got one next to it you're running a three inch column you'll run your three inch column twice as fast as you'll run the two inch column that's the that's the only difference okay now what is the difference between this and I've got all going with one piece of this stack on here because in a three inch column in a larger still, your column tends to start getting a little bit longer, up to about 54 inches or so. So if you're designing your own still, uh, anywhere from 30, for a three inch column, anywhere from about 36 to 54 inches is a good size. Um, there is a point of no return. You can get so high that you start to lose so much efficiency that there's no real benefit um, unless you can control some outside environmental influences and we'll talk about that later okay now uh, so I'll set this down here oh this is known as the brew house version of a reflux column and you'll see here these cross tubes and those cross tubes, if you can see those, they go all the way through, they, from one side to the other, and they're sealed. So what you have is you have a series of tubes with tubing that connects them all, and what water in the bottom, 
and water comes out the top, right? And this is the condenser, the Liebig condenser, or better known by George as a shotgun condenser. Water in the bottom, water out the top. In the condenser, it's 100% full power flow water, okay? In the reflux chamber, make sure you meter the water. Same description as the Mighty Mini with the jacketed reflux column. Now, that's another primary difference between the two different companies and the two different styles. One likes to use the jacket, and they will tell you that that's better than cross tubes. Uh, if you talk to the company that makes the cross tubes, they'll tell you the cross tubes are better than the jacket. I leave that up to you. It doesn't make any difference to me. They both work the same way. Uh, they both do exactly the same thing. Makes no difference to me. And in this one, of course, yeah, I've got that uh, rubber bung in the top for, yeah, there. For my temperature probe or my uh, PID probe. And now, of course, this would set right on top. Now, what are my options with this still? This is also a dual purpose still. I could run this as a straight pot still by not hooking up the reflux chamber. And I've got plenty of length. Um, another option is to take out the bottom column, drop this all the way down, and just run this column. And just run it right out, run it as a pot still. I can run it as a modified reflux if I want to without this, without that piece of column. But I'm kind of shortchanging myself because it's there for a reason. And that is in a reflux still, you need the distance in order for your reflux once it takes place, it has to have a place to go. So, in order for that to all happen. Oh, this is getting so easy. Now, in this particular setup, I can actually just take the condenser off and place it on top of this and run it that way. So, those are your options. Now, when you start, when you, when you look into purchasing one of these, you're, you're in the, oh, anywhere from $200, $300 to, you know, $500 range. Um, there are stills that are available that are just straight pot stills. Um, and they do not come with any reflux chamber whatsoever. Uh, my advice is to look in deeply and be cautious um, because if you get a combination, dual purpose, um, you have the benefits of both worlds. You can do pot or reflux. But if you buy just the pot still, um, and then later on you say, dang it, I'm going to start refluxing now because I want to make some good stuff, some high proof. Uh, now you're forced to go buy another column because you've only got a pot steel column. Um, and to buy the column in most cases, not every, but in most cases is a little bit more expensive than it would have been, you know, for the sake of, you know, anywhere from 50 to 70 bucks at the front end. If you got the dual purpose, um, you're probably saving yourself 150 bucks on the back end if you have to buy a new column. Yeah, and then you got one that you're using and one that you ain't using. Oh, you follow me. Okay. Now, there are other options. Um, this one in particular, I have a three-inch, it's called a gin basket. And you see, it's called a gin basket because it's a place, because I'm going to make gin. So, it's got the screen in the bottom so I can drop a whole bunch of juniper berries and distill through them. And, therefore, impart all that flavor from that very, very high concentrated flavor profile in a juniper berry, uh, a coffee bean, um, a star anise, um, and things like that that really do impart a lot of flavor. <coughs> um, there's not enough room in here for apples and strawberries and all that other stuff, so remember that most flavored spirits are flavored, conditioned, and matured after the run, which means they come out totally clear, colorless, and uh, they have that character with them, and then that is enhanced by additions, uh, by either infusion um, or by just straight addition. Uh, and then there's an aging process. And uh, we'll get into that at some point as well. Now, I hope I've answered all of your questions. Now, one last thing that I want to cover. I want to cover copper. Give me a second. I'll be right back. Um, I'm back, and let's talk about copper. The, the only still I had that has copper in it is this one. This is made out of copper, okay? 
For those of you who are firm believers that you absolutely have to have copper in there to remove the sulfites, uh, have at it. Uh, I always use the copper just because it makes everybody happy and nobody asks a question. Okay? Uh, I've run stills with it. I've run stills without it. George can't tell the difference. Most of the people I know can't tell the difference, but there are some out there who will swear by it. So, for all intents and purposes, just use it. Okay? Now, there are a couple of other things you can use. In a reflux chamber, uh, the more surface area you have in a cooling precondensing chamber, the more surface area you have, a little bit more reflux activity can take place. Now, unless you're using a reflux chamber, copper, ceramic saddles, marbles, and all that other stuff is not going to do you much good. Okay? Um, I, I get this on a regular basis. So I get an email and someone say, man, I put in three three copper rolls in there and I should get a bunch of reflux. And I was like, eh, well, you, you know, th there's a, okay, a four inch piece of copper rolled up and placed inside your column is equivalent to about a plate, okay? A plate is a measurement and it's a thing, okay? You got theoretical plates in a column and then you got physical plates in a column. Um, so you can develop theoretical plates, but unless you're using a reflux chamber, you're not getting the full benefit of all of those plates. Um, especially after the column balances. See, once it balances, that means that the column, the contents, and the vapor are all at about the same temperature. Now, you do have more surface area in order to clean uh, and or purify, remove sulfates, um, if you're using copper scrubbers. Um, and the same thing with marbles. Marbles have a, gr have a wonderful surface area and it increases the surface area. You can use pennies, or you can use cut up pieces of copper tube. There's a bunch of stuff you can use. But just remember one thing, please. Whatever you use, once you place that in the column, place your mouth over the end of it and breathe. If you can breathe through it, well then it's not packed too tightly. Uh, if you can't breathe through it, you've got too much in that column and now you're starting to create a dangerous environment because now you have back pressure. See there? We've covered everything you need to know about stills. Pot, reflux, we even said we weren't going to talk about thumpers. Uh, fractionating columns and every one of these systems are an open system. An open system meaning that they're perfectly safe unless you do something to make them unsafe such as overpack the column. Then you start to build up pressure inside your system. Okay. As always, I can't wait till the next one because we have got some great information coming. Happy distilling.